day 82, and we're going to deal with a different kind of method that web servers use, which is called get. Now, if you think about post as a way of wrapping up a bunch of different values inside of a dictionary and posting it, sending it back to the web server in one neat little package, there is an alternative, which is to use get, which is where the web server just goes, oi, give me that details and takes it from the user. And that's a completely different model. On post, it's user generated. I send my details to the web server and it deals with it. Get is very much the web server going, I haven't got time to deal with you. Give me this stuff now. But you have seen get stuff before. If you've ever gone to a website that had a question mark after the website name and then a bunch of values with equals in it afterwards, maybe separated by ampersand symbols. By the way, also a symbol I like very much. Haven't got a t-shirt with that yet. We'll clearly have to develop one for the Replit store. If you have ever seen a page like that, you've used get variables. The big difference is very, very simple. With post, that data cannot be seen by your web browser. Once it's sent, it's gone. You can't then bookmark or share a website address based on post data because it will be different for everybody else. I'm sure you've received links from your family to an item in their shopping cart. And when you've opened it on your phone, it's just a blank shopping cart. Well, that was post data at work. Get data encodes the data in the URL, in the website address. So we can bookmark it and we can share it and get the same results from the page. Let's add some code to our default app route to show how this works. I'm gonna add some methods to it and just run it. Now you'll see that that still works. If I'd made that post, we would have had an error on this particular page, but get still works because it's looking for any variable stored or encoded in this URL. Once again, we need to bring in quest library. And this time we're going to do, we're going to return request.args. And let's see what we get here. We'll restart the server because we've changed the Python code and we'll restart and we're getting nothing. And that's because there's nothing encoded in that URL. Let's open a new tab and access our URL again. And you notice here, hopefully that there's an empty dictionary being displayed. I put a question mark, I can then define some variables like name equals David. Notice that's now picked up by that function. So if I put an ampersand in, I can declare something else. And I'm constructing a dictionary from variables that I'm passing in the URL. Now that's really, really quite useful because if I set it up so that my requests.arg is just copied in and stored as a variable called get, then I can do some nice ifs on it. I can say if get name, maybe even dot lower it, David return, hello Baldy. So we do need this return no data on the bottom because if we are gonna get no name in there, we need to print something back out. So you'll see here that now with a different name, I get no data. If I go back to being David, I get my personal greeting. Now you might be thinking, well, what's the point of this? This all feels a bit strange. Well, the ability to encode variables in the URL is really important especially for things that are not particularly security conscious. With POST, any data that's transmitted will be encrypted with the encryption standard used in the protocol. And that's a very fancy way of saying, if your website starts HTTPS, then the data sent via the form will be encrypted and won't be able to be seen along the transmission, meaning that hackers can't get into it as it's sent across the internet. With GET, variables are encoded as plain text in the website address. So, all that data is being sent for everyone to see. So this isn't a good thing to use to store things like usernames and passwords, but it's very good for storing settings. It's very good for storing locations or other things that you might want to know or be able to bookmark. Of course, I've broken some code that you need to fix. It's 82 days now. You, I, I hope you understand that that's the way we're doing it. That's the, that's the, like, the structure of the lessons. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool, 82 days. Your challenge for today is to create a page that has two different languages for it. Let's go for forward slash language as the page. The default page should be a greeting in English. Go and use a translation service to translate that to a language of your choice. Use the get variable to pick up on whether that's been set in the URL. If the URL has been set to English, it should show the English page. If it's been set to your other language, it should show that page instead. 
This is a really good use case for using the get variable because it doesn't matter that other people know what language you're using, but it's a great way of bookmarking it so I can bookmark and always go back to that language on that page when I want to. When you're done, share it with us by publishing it in community and use the hashtag replit 100 days of code when you're sharing it with us on social media. Tomorrow, we're going to go back to our blogging engine from a few lessons ago and include with it a get based theme picker. Thank <music> you.